So the first thing we're going to do is turn off the gas. We're going to turn the actual control to off. We're going to need a guard hose to connect to here. And we're going to need a flat tip screwdriver to turn this valve on and off. Now as you look up here, a lot of people will say to turn that water supply off. I disagree. Here's why. You want that fresh cold water coming in through the supply line, going down through this dip tube right here, and breaking up the sediment in the bottom of the tank. Otherwise, you won't get it all drained out. So let's talk about a few safety devices on here. This is an expansion tank. On top of that expansion tank is an air relief valve, your water supply line, down into the dip tube, fills the tank up, pushes the hot water up, comes out the discharge side, and goes into the house. This is a PRV, pressure regulating valve. That relieves this pressure thermodynamically. That valve will open up, go down this line, which drains to the exterior. You wanna check this valve every now and then to make sure that it's working. It hasn't gotten corroded and it's stuck. Sometimes you gotta tap it. You tap it like this, make sure it reseats. Then you can go to the exterior and make sure that it is seated and is not still draining water out there. You gotta give it a few minutes to drain the line down even after you close this valve. So we're gonna connect this garden hose. By the way, always replace that rubber gasket. See how it's imprinted from somewhere else? So here you can see how indented that versus a new one. See how the new one is nice and flat, no indentions. So we're gonna take and install that new one. Then we're gonna connect the garden hose. So you're going to need an old t-shirt of some kind and either a bucket or in this case I had a damaged crate container that I went ahead it was cracked on the bottom so I went ahead and drilled four holes in it and we're going to take with the t-shirt like so we're going to clamp it down. Now if you had a round bucket you could use a round bucket and a bungee cord or something like that. But since we don't have that, we're going to use these. And we're going to set the hose in here. Then we're going to turn this valve. Right now it's off, so it's crossways. We're going to turn it. You hear the water? So now it's flowing freely. We strap the hose in. Even if the t-shirt doesn't work, you're going to get to see all the sediment in the bottom of the tub or if you use a, and then we'll see what all comes out of the water here. Stand by. Okay, the water's starting to run clear. So the water's running clear, so we're gonna turn it off. Now when you take this hose off, uh, it may drip a little bit. We need to check and make sure that valve doesn't stick a little bit open, because if it does, we need to put a cap on it, a garden hose cap. Let's go check out our results. And we've got some heavy sediment. Look inside there. Wow. That's a lot. So what you're gonna do next is you're gonna take this flame cover off so that you can see in there. We're gonna turn the gas on. Like so. So we're gonna turn this to pilot. And we're gonna press it and then we're gonna hit the igniter. Put the safety cover back in. Then you're gonna turn from pilot to whatever your temperature setting is you want. We like our lot of water a little warm. Don't put it over 120 because it can scald you, especially children and elderly. You wanna see that light on this particular gas unit flashing one time. You can kind of see all the different flashes, what that status code is. Pretty straightforward. 